So eyes, they exist, right? I mean, really, I've never seen my own eyes, only reflections and recordings of my own eyes, but you never really see your own eyes, and I don't think I'd really want to. Uh, yet, I know your eyes exist. I'm looking at them right now through the camera, and you're looking at mine through the internet. So just promise that you won't lie when you say I have eyes, and I won't lie to you either. In today's video, I'm going to talk about Pokemon with interesting eyes and use them as a catalyst to explain why their inspirational sources have them. You'll see what I mean. Oh, ha, ha, ha. You'll see what I mean. Ha, ha. So, you have eyes, and you should probably protect those jelly balls inside your skull. And have I got a treat for you. I am very honored to say that this video is sponsored by the makers of these beauties, Jin's Eyewear, and their new Pokemon model series. Prescription and non-prescription glasses that... I mean, they're glasses. You know what glasses do. These ones are my wife's prescription, so... I'm already dizzy, even though it's been five seconds. Here's mine. They're styling, right? And right now, for a limited time, they've got a deal. You have the option to add blue light lenses for free. That's $60 saved. Blue light glasses reduce digital eye strain, which is when your eyes get sore and tired from looking at a screen too much. Thanks, Snorlax. But look at the details! You can really see the Snorlax inspiration in this model's design. Their flagship models feature some fan-favorite Pokémon from the Kanto region. Look, they end in their tails! They come with this chic, leather-like carrying case, which opens to reveal more excellent details. There's also these Kanto and Johto region models, which have original cases and cleaning cloths of their own as well. And we can't forget the kiddos! There are, of course, kid-sized models as well. And look at the cleaning cloth! It's Rotom Phone! That's so good! Curious what you'd look like in them? You can experience all of the Jin's Pokemon models true to size and in the comfort of your own home with their virtual try-on. Technology is so cool! You can check all of these out with your eyes with my link down in the description. And you can use the coupon code LOXTONOGGIN15 for an extra $15 off. And a big thanks again. I am going to need prescription lenses when I get older. These don't look bad on my face. I actually quite like them. So, other than humans, there are plenty of animals with eyes. In fact, most of them do, and interestingly, eyes vary widely in the animal kingdom. And believe it or not, human eyes are actually pretty good compared to most animals. Sure, we're no bird of prey, but even birds of prey suffer from up-close vision. No, where human vision excels is our ability to see fine details and our variable adaptability. Humans rely on their vision so much that our brains tend to prefer it over the other senses. 80% of our impressions of things come from sight. And without touch and smell, we would easily bump that up to 99%. Can't say 100 though, because I'm not a doctor, even though these glasses make me look like I'm one. But funnily enough, the first Pokemon of today's video does not have eyes at all. It's Zubat. Yeah, no eyes. Or are they secretly just mega tiny eyes hidden inside the little boy's fur? Now Zubat clearly is based on a bat, and you know that saying, blind as a bat. Well, every time you say it, you're lying to yourself. In fact, bats have pretty decent vision. The flying fox is even one of the more notable vision-based hunters. The saying is based on misinformation, people just jumping to conclusions because bats are not only nocturnal, but they also like to live in dark caves, almost as if they don't need to use their eyes. But they do. Inside your eyes, you have rods and cones, which are little light receptors. And to put it simply, cones are your daytime vision and rods are for nighttime. Really, it's just how they receive light. Rods can work with lower light levels, though are less accurate. However, the main point is that the more rods you have, typically the better night vision you have. Bats, being a nighttime predator, need much more rods than cones, so their day vision isn't all that great. But still, they aren't exactly blind. Yet in Pokémon, they took the idiom to heart and made Zubat actually blind, using echolocation only to get around and to get an understanding of its surroundings. Which isn't great, uh, though there are some blind humans who have learned how to do this too, and it is for sure better than nothing. But yeah, no eyes. In fact, the Pokédex goes on to state that they lived in caves so much that they just closed their eyes forever. And it's weird, because in the evolution of eyes, if it is super dark where you live, you get either mega eyes or no eyes at all. And it may have to do with whether or not there even is the slightest bit of light or not. The deep depths of the ocean, at least until a certain point, still gets the tiniest amount of light. But in completely sealed caves deep underground, 
it's no use at all. But what's really odd is that Zubat's evolutions have eyes, but considering it only evolves into Crobat via friendship, it could be that because it's spending a lot more time outside during the day with its trainer, it's slowly developing its eyes again. But now, evolution in a more real sense is seen firsthand with insects. The arthropod world has some of the most fascinating eyes in the entire world. Compound eyes. These work by putting hundreds of small eyes next to each other, providing an immeasurable amount of information all at once to the brain. However, this comes at a cost, typically in resolution. You can imagine our eyes as a very nice camera. You can see a resolution of like a million or something, whereas each part of a compound eye sees a single pixel, in quotes, because obviously we're not talking digital stuff, but it gets the idea across. Basically, they sort of see like this. No comment. However, what they lack in resolution they make up for in extreme speed! And they are extremely wide-angled, having much larger fields of view compared to our lame binocular vision. Oh, and some compound eyes are even able to see ultraviolet light spectrums. In Pokémon, it's hard to see which bug types truly have compound eyes, because even a lot of these bugs have regular, cartoony anime eyes. But not all of them. Venonat, Dustox, Yanmega, Butterfree, Beedrill, Ledian, Dwebble, who's actually a crab, Genesect, Chargebug, Vikavolt, Volcarona, Vavillian. So there are actually more than I thought. Now, Yanma actually has a dex entry talking about its eyes. It can see in 360 vision. Yeah, every direction. With, without doing that, it just it sees everywhere now. You know, like those weird VR roller coaster adventures filmed in full 360 so that you can look anywhere with your VR headset and still see it. Now imagine just seeing all of that at once. It's near incomprehensible to us, yet with a compound eye, it could very easily be possible. Imagine being able to see your butt and your nose at the same time. Now, there are only two real-life animals that have 360 degree vision, without turning their head, that is, and it's dragonflies. Oh sweet, that's what Yanma is. Whoa, they did their research. And chameleons. That's right, it's a segue into Kecleon. Except that nah, Kecleon's lame. Let's talk about chameleons. Chameleons have the most distinctive eyes of any reptile. Their upper and lower eyelids are joined with only a single pinhole large enough for the pupil to see through. Each eye can pivot and focus independently of each other, allowing the chameleon to observe two different objects simultaneously. But speaking of having eyes, spiders have a bunch of them, so you'd like to imagine that they are pretty good at seeing. I mean, they have to see bugs. Those are hard to see. They're so small. But surprisingly, spider vision is actually trash. Well, your typical spider, anyway. The more a spider relies on its web to hunt, the worse its vision is, typically. Take your typical house spider, blind as a bat, blind as a something that actually has bad vision, like a spider. A lot of spiders can't really see what's past their webs, basically. Yet, spiders with much larger, less numerous eyes tend to be much better sight predators. Take the jumping spider. It's got only four eyes, really, with much larger eyes than your typical spider. Though they do also have other eyes, uh, these two, but they're very small. Oh, and it also almost has 360 degree vision, but its thick booty blocks a lot of the sight. So it can see like a Pac-Man amount of vision, thanks to those two extra eyes that are on the back sides of its head. Galvantula is one of the only spider... I don't have a Galvantula plush. Galvantula is one of the only Spider-Mon with more than four eyes, having six. However, four of them look like they're sort of just small dots, secondary eyes, unused or possibly only used in special instances, such as low light. But most Spider-Mon have these large eyes, meaning they aren't primarily web-based spiders, like Ariados. It's a much more aggressive, predatory spider. <laughs> Spooky. Spooky, just like seeing things that aren't really there. Eyes are a sensor, simple fact. They are used to gather data that the brain then uses to see. But I mean, do we actually see? Or is our brain just making things up entirely because our eyes are telling it what they think it sees? People who see things typically will have eyes that are perfectly fine, but the brain is understanding the eyes' signals incorrectly. Hence, hallucinogens doing their whole thing to your brain. <laughs> now transition to owls. Noctowl is an owl. So is Decidueye. I don't have a Decidueye plush. 
Real owls have large eyes because they are typically nocturnal hunters, so they need their eyes to let in more light, or at least what little light there is. The bigger the eye, the more light it can gather. Simple fact about eyes. Yet, owls are a little special. Their eyes are actually locked in place in the socket. Yeah, they can't move their eyes. They are unable to do this. And that's why they evolved to have crazy necks that can turn almost all the way around. It's to compensate for that lack of ability. And compensate they do. On average, humans move their eyes more than three times a second. That's like a hundred thousand movements a day. So don't take that for granted. You could have been born an owl. But why can't they move them? Well, because they aren't eyeballs. Owl eyes are more like long tubes. Also consider that their eyes take up like 3% of their entire body. For comparison, human eyes only take up 0.003% of our entire bodies. But of course, it helps them hunt. Most of the time. Owl eyes are extremely far-sighted, meaning that they can see pinpoint accurately with things that are kind of far away, hence the Sidui being such an amazing archer. But they have a hard time seeing things up close. It's all a blur big blown out bright blur. And that might be why Decidueye has feathers resembling glasses around its eyes. And that's also why real owls have small sensory hairs around their beak to detect the closer prey. It's more akin to feeling where they are rather than seeing. But sensory hairs, that's a mole thing, right? Because if a bat is blind, then a mole probably doesn't even have eyes. Uh, they do, and bats aren't blind. But unlike real moles, the moles in the Pokemon world are pretty normal eye weirdos. Except for Diglett. Those eyes are tiny little dots. Like a child made this creature. This is, uh, this is my friend. It's a tube and it has a big nose and, uh, some eyes. Yep, that's a mole. Unlike bats, some species of moles can actually be fully blind, using only their sense of touch to dig through the earth. Or use their sense of smell to find roots that are buried. They, they literally smell their way through the dirt with their very sensitive snouts. Just <laughs> smells like dirt. This is why in media, a lot of the time, you see moles wearing little sunglasses, as a lot of legally blind people do too. Now, seeing through dirt by cheating with your other senses is one thing, but Luxray, now it's got the real deal. It's got Lou X-ray vision. Here's a Pokedex entry. When its eyes gleam gold, it can spot hidden prey, even those taking shelter behind a wall. That's basically X-ray vision, the popular 1950s superpower. But not generally based on X-ray specifically though. Instead, these powers typically use some other special penetration particle to see, just like those X-ray machines you see at airports. Actual X-rays are a type of radiation that can pass through the body. They can't be seen by the naked eye, and you can't feel them, but denser parts of your body, such as the bones, block more X-rays, which is why machinery sensitive to X-rays can see your bones. Really, it's seeing more of the things being blocked. So it's unseeing your bones, which pinpoints where your bones are. But magically seeing things, or magically seeing through things, isn't really X-ray vision. Well, not entirely x-ray anyway. That's just a more colloquial term. Realistically speaking, superpowers like this are more accurately T-ray vision. Terahertz radiation, which is used to see slightly less deep into you, only typically being able to penetrate through plastic and cloth. So, nudie vision. That's why the airports are getting in trouble. They're looking at wieners while at work. I feel like that's against company policy. And Luxray, for some magical reason, can harness this power of being able to see through solid objects to find its prey. So it must have something to do with its golden eye gleam, sending out X-rays only for it to be bounced back. And by X-rays, I of course mean T-rays mixed with X-rays. It's magic, all right? But clearly Luxray causes cancer in California and you better put a sticker on that. Well, I'm getting off topic. So let's go deeper. Into the caves, that is. Let's talk Sableye. I mean, it's got gems for eyes. What's up with that? And it eats gemstones, which then deposit into its eyes? It eats carbink even. Do you think it eats the eyes out of other lesser Sableyes? They are dark type little goblins, aren't they? And then Gigalith. It also has sort of gemstone eyes. There's gotta be something in the real world like that, right? Well, yeah. Heck, any Pokemon with glass or inorganic eyes could be in this category. We can explain how their eyes work, all thanks to one single animal, the West Indian Fuzzy Chitten. 
It's this small plate mail looking roly poly armor caterpillar clam thing. It has tiny spots all over its body that are actually its eyes. Fun fact, did you know that clams actually do in fact have eyes too? Yeah, it's these. They're always watching. But the chitin, in order to keep its armor up, its eyes are actually made of rock. Well, not literally rock. What I mean is its eyes are made of a non-organic compound, so basically rocks. They use the transparent nature of crystals to see through this crystal-like armor that protects its rods and cones on the inside. It does mean that its eyesight is likely very poor, but the rigidity its eyes has gives it a huge boost in defense. Which is fitting for a lot of the rock type Pokemon. Gosh, the Animal Kingdom is so cool! No wonder Game Freak is able to get so many awesome Pokemon ideas from it. And I could just go on and on talking about just eyes! Like, I didn't even talk about eagle eyes or third eyes or which Pokemon are likely colorblind and so on, but I gotta stop somewhere. And that somewhere is here. Thanks so much for using your eyes on this video. Check out Jin's Eyewear and their new Pokemon model series with the link down below, and tell me which one is your favorite. I really like the Snorlax and Cyndaquil ones, but the Pikachu and Mew! Oh, those are so cute too! Just make sure you take care of your eyes. It helps you continue to never stop using your noggin.